So this morning I coded a hesitate directive in Angular that emits a hesitate event that's actually based on a series of underlying DOM events, specifically the mouse enter and the mouse leave. Now because I only wanted to ch trigger a change detection digest during the hesitate event, I explicitly bound the mouse enter and the mouse leave outside of the Angular zone. Then I re-enter the Angular zone when I want to trigger the hesitate event. This worked but it was kind of, uh, not janky, but it required a lot more boilerplate. And what I prefer to use is this beautiful syntax that Angular provides right out of the box with its template-based event binding. So I wanted to see if I could leverage this kind of syntax, but have a little bit more control or exercise a little bit more control over whether or not the change detection digest is triggered as part of the event binding. So I wanted to explore the idea of being able to take any particular DOM event like click, and just suffix it with this no change detection uh, token here. And then this would bind the click event using Angular's template-based event binding, but omit the change detection lifecycle at the end of that event trigger. Now, the way that Angular is architected, all of these template bindings are actually managed through a plugin system, or some of them are managed through a plugin system. The DOM events, sorry, the DOM event portions of this are managed through a plugin system, which means that we can actually create a plugin that looks for this particular suffix and intercepts the configuration for this type of event. Now, in the app module, you'll see that uh, we pull in this event managers plugin, and I'm providing as part of a multi collection here for event manager plugins this DOM events no change detection plugin. This no change detection plugin is going to intercept the event types that end in no change detection and it's going to bind the DOM events outside of the Angular zone such that no change detection is triggered after the event, the underlying DOM event is triggered. Let's take a look at that direct or that plugin. So I'm getting all my terminologies mixed up. Um, so both the add event listener and the add global event listener, which is part of the interface for uh, an event plugin, those turn around and call this setup event binding. Now if we jump down to the setup event binding, what you'll see is that I get the zone for Angular, then I run the add proxy method outside of the Angular zone. Now the add proxy method is what sets up the event listener. Now because of that, it means that the event is being bound to the target outside of the Angular zone, which means that when this event fires, it won't trigger automatic change detection in the Angular rendering engine. Um, and now we can see this if we go back to our app component, right? So now I have two buttons, one with a click uh, with no change detection indication. So it's going to uh, trigger change detection afterwards. This one with the no change detection indication is not going to trigger change detection afterwards. And to differentiate the two uh, for the user experience, I'm setting up an ng do check lifecycle method. And this gets called anytime Angular needs to uh, trigger a change detection or anytime a change detection is triggered in the local component or the local view. So if we jump over into the browser, and let's just refresh to make sure we have the right code. Here's the the control case, right? You can see that every time I click the button, a do check is called click, do check, click, do check, so on and so forth. So what we're seeing is that out of the box, every time I use Angular's core DOM events, I get the implicit change detection check afterwards. Now let's compare that with the click no change detection. We will see that all I get is the logging of the button click, but I don't get any calls to the ND do check lifecycle method. And that's because the click handler for this button has been bound outside of the core Angular zone, which means that the event itself doesn't implicitly trigger change detection. Now, in the vast, vast, vast majority of cases, you'll never have to care about this. But remember, I was building this hesitate function, this hesitate directive, and the hesitate event was built on top of several underlying DOM events. And I didn't want to have to trigger change detection for those intermediary DOM events. So now let's take a look at the refactoring of the hesitate directive using this new no change detection uh, suffix. So if we look at the hesitate directive, what you'll see is that now in the host bindings, I'm listening for mouse enter, mouse down, and mouse leave. 
with the no change detection suffix, which means that these event handlers, handle mouse enter, handle mouse down, handle mouse leave, are all gonna be bound outside of the Angular zone, which means that they're not gonna trigger change detection implicitly when the DOM events are triggered. But because we do have this hesitate events, right, which is our, uh, sorry, which is our hesitate output, we do want to trigger change detection when we emit that event. So you'll see, and you can look at this code later, you'll see that when we reach our timer threshold for the amount of time the user has paused over a particular DOM element, we have to step back into the Angular zone because again, we bound all of our DOM events outside of the Angular zone. So now we need to step back into the Angular zone before we call the emit function on our, the emit method on our uh, public hesitate event emitter. Now we can see this in the app component, right? Because we have our hesitate here. So remember the hesitate directive is using the no change detection under the hood, but we want to see if the ng do check is called after the hesitate uh, event is triggered. So it's clear. So if we mouse over this and then pause, what you'll see is we get the user hesitated to act and then we get the ng do check. And that's because we stepped back into the angular zone before we emitted this event. Now what you'll see is that if I don't pause over that, we're still gonna be triggering all those mouse enter and mouse leave events, but because those have been bound outside of the Angular zone, I'm not triggering change detection simply for the uh, intermediary events needed to synthesize that hesitate event. So again, for the vast majority of cases, uh, you won't find this interesting at all. You'll never have to think about change detection. It just works out of the box as part of the beautiful uh, things that Angular brings to the table. But in that small sliver of outlier cases, such as synthesizing event based on a series of underlying DOM events, being able to have a little bit more control over the change detection lifecycle is important, or let's call it an optimization. And we can do so, uh, sorry, and we can do so without losing the elegance of Angular's management of event bindings, right? We don't have to add this when the component is mounted. We don't have to, de to remove it when the component is destroyed. By using the template-based host bindings, Angular manages all that for us. All we really want to do is tell Angular not to trigger a change digest when it emits those events. We'll take care of that inside of our custom logic. So anyway, just a fun little uh, end of week experiment here. Um, something that I can see using, you know, in 0.005% of cases, uh, but in those cases, uh, using it to keep the code more clean and more elegant.